Japanese folklore, there are many mysterious and fascinating creatures, and the Kappa is one of the most iconic beings. Kappa are believed to be guardians of rivers and lakes, possessing unique appearances and behaviors. Kappa are described as humanoid yokai, supernatural creatures, with unusual physical features. They typically have green skin, a bird-like beak on their faces, a shell on their backs, and stand about one meter tall. On top of their heads, they have a bull-shaped depression filled with water, which is their weakness. Additionally, Kappa have webbed fingers and toes, enabling them to swim and dive in water with great agility. Kappa make their homes in rivers and lakes, using them as their base of operations. They are skilled swimmers and divers, possessing superhuman strength and agility. Kappa excel at utilizing water-related abilities, such as manipulating water currents, shape-shifting into fish or animals, and emitting eerie sounds. Kappa are omnivorous creatures, primarily feeding on fish and fruits, although they occasionally prey on animals. According to some legends, Kappa are also depicted as man-eating creatures. It is said that Kappa typically lurk near riverbanks or lakes, waiting for unsuspecting individuals to accidentally fall into the water. Once someone approaches their territory, Kappa appear and demonstrate their power. They capture their prey using their swift swimming abilities and strong fingers, dragging them into the water. Kappa are even more agile underwater, quickly pulling their prey into the depths where escape becomes impossible. Once caught by a kappa, the prey faces the fate of being submerged into the abyss and becoming the kappa's meal. In addition, it is said that kappa are particularly lustful creatures. Once they become infatuated with a woman, she becomes corrupted and immoral. After forcibly violating the woman, the kappa impregnates her and then consumes her after she gives birth to the child. However, kappa are not solely depicted as ruthless man-eating monsters. According to legends, they also have a human-like aspect to their nature. They are considered mischievous tricksters who enjoy playing pranks on humans. Sometimes they choose to harm humans, but they usually do not put them in mortal danger. Kappa may tease those who unintentionally intrude upon their territory or show disrespect to nature as a way of warning them to respect the importance of rivers and lakes. Furthermore, one of the pranks Kappa play on human males is to steal their testicles and consume them. In addition to their cannibalistic behavior and folklore, Kappa are also known for their ability to make contracts with humans. It is said that Kappa can enter into agreements with humans in exchange for specific services or favors. These contracts often occur at night when people approach rivers or lakes, and the Kappa suddenly appears, proposing a trade with the human. These trades may involve the kappa providing abundant fish or other valuable returns. In exchange, humans must abide by specific rules and conditions, such as not damaging the river's ecosystem, keeping the water clean, or offering specific food sacrifices annually. If humans adhere to the terms of the contract, the kappa will fulfill their promises and provide the promised rewards. However, if humans violate the contract, the kappa will seek revenge or revoke the agreement causing them to experience misfortune or disaster. In addition to the cannibalistic behavior and legends, Kappa are also renowned for their ability to make contracts with humans. It is said that Kappa can enter into agreements with humans in exchange for specific services or favors. These contracts often occur at night when people approach rivers or lakes, and the Kappa suddenly appear, proposing a trade with humans. These trades may involve the kappa providing abundant fish or other valuable returns. In exchange, humans must abide by specific rules and conditions, such as not damaging the river's ecosystem, keeping the water clean, or offering specific food sacrifices annually. If humans comply with the terms of the contract, the kappa will fulfill their promises and provide the rewards promised. However, if humans violate the contract, the kappa will seek revenge or revoke the agreement causing them to experience misfortune or disaster, or even eat them. These legends and stories about kappa contracts demonstrate the connection and interdependence between humans and nature in Japanese culture. They teach people to respect and protect natural resources to maintain a harmonious coexistence with rivers, lakes, and other natural environments. These stories also emphasize the importance of contracts and agreements to maintain peace and balance. 
There's a famous Kappa contract legend about a young fisherman. When his catch dwindled, the fisherman decided to make a contract with a nearby Kappa in hopes of improving his fishing. On a moonlit night, he went to the riverbank and loudly called out the Kappa's name at a specific time. Suddenly, a Kappa emerged from the water and engaged in a friendly conversation with the fisherman. The Kappa expressed willingness to help the fisherman, but with one condition, the fisherman had to provide a fresh fish every month in exchange. The fisherman gladly accepted the condition, and in the following months, his catch indeed significantly increased. Grateful for the Kappa's assistance, he faithfully fulfilled the contract. However, over time, the fisherman became increasingly greedy. He started taking more fish and disregarded the contract with the Kappa. He believed he could get more without giving more. He showed no concern for the river's ecosystem and began damaging the trees and vegetation along the riverbank. This behavior infuriated the Kappa, who sought revenge against the fisherman. One morning, when the fisherman went out to see the fish, a sudden strong wind struck and pushed his small boat into the turbulent river. Despite his desperate struggle, he couldn't escape the powerful current and was ultimately swallowed by the river. In Japan, there are many legends and conspiracy theories surrounding the Kappa. Some people believe that Kappa are actually extraterrestrial beings, while others claim that they are reptilian humanoids known as lizard people in Japan. Although very few Japanese people have personally seen a Kappa, they strongly believe in their existence. There have even been claims of discovering Kappa mummies. In Miyazaki Prefecture, Kyushu Island, Japan, a pair of Kappa hands that had become desiccated were displayed for the first time. These hands were said to have come from a Kappa hunted in 1818. Most of the discoveries of Kappa mummies have been concentrated in Kyushu. The Kappa mummy preserved by Matsuura Sake Brewery in Saga Prefecture is the most famous, with a body length of approximately 40 centimeters. There are also photographs of Kappa mummy specimens in temples in Osaka, but access for interviews has been denied to the public. These photos cannot be found on YouTube, but if you are curious, you can search for them on Google. In addition to the aforementioned legends, many people also believe that the Kappa discovered in ancient times were actually the floating corpses of children. This belief is based on the fact that the skin color of a floating corpse can turn green or other colors, and the height of the Kappa is similar to that of a child. The hair, being washed by the riverbed, appears bald after the scalp decomposes. The back of the Kappa, swollen by absorbing water, appears shell-like. Furthermore, in ancient Japan, it was believed that to control population growth, children were thrown into rivers to drown. It is said that the fabrication of the Kappa legend was a means to prevent children from discovering the horrific truth by witnessing the corpses. However, if this theory is true, then the mummies displayed throughout Japan would be the corpses of children. The above is the introduction to the Kappa today. If you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing and scary stories. Also, please click the like button to support our program. If you want to submit your own story, please send it to our address at midnightwhisper at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.